So my name is Jordi Nijenhuis. Um, I'm a trainer and project manager at RTC in the Netherlands. This is not TC office. This is my home office um, since we're pretty much close to a second lockdown here in the Netherlands. Um, at RTC, uh, we, we, are, we are a training center based at, in the media capital Hilversum in the Netherlands. And we train journalists, uh, content creators, but also NGOs to build more powerful stories, but also to create campaigns with a behavioral change element. And within the scope of uh, the Game Changer project, we have developed a campaign curriculum. Um, this curriculum consists of a big canvas. That's the one you see on your screen now. Um, we created slide decks for trainers. Um, we created a trainer's manual, but also a handbook for young people to build powerful campaigns with an impact. Um, of course, this was all developed just before COVID-19 hit. Um, so it's pretty much an offline um, training, but now we transformed some bits and pieces to the online world. So you can have uh, a teaser of the training. Um, the, the, the entire curriculum consists of 13 elements. And these are all the elements you need to build powerful campaigns for a positive change. Um, in this session, we will talk about the first square. And arguably, it's the most important square. It's about target audiences. It's about reaching the right audience. And also, this will have an impact on all the other squares in the curriculum. Uh, after camp, all this material will be made available to you. Um, and you can try to, or you can, you can work with it to implement your own trainings. And just before we start with the actual session, I would like to ask you to go to a link I will share right now just to get to know each other a bit. So in the chat, you will uh, link to Mural. If you go to Mural, you can double click on the cache you see over there, a post-it note or a sticky note with your name on it. I already see a couple of people joining us. So maybe I can share my screen so the other people can see what we are seeing. So this is mural. You can just double click anywhere on this beautiful image and the post-it note will appear. So this is my post-it note and I will put my name in it. And I would like to ask you to do the same, pick your favorite color and create a post-it note with your name on it. If you click on the post-it note, you can put your name in. So double click again. Yes, awesome. You can make it bigger. You can drag it around. I think we need a couple more. Join the link, create a post-it note. Cool, for the ones with a post-it note with their name on it, I'm going to give a couple of questions and then you can drag your post-it note to the place you think you 100% agree, agree with this statement or totally disagree, but also feel free to put your post-it notes anywhere in between. So statement number one, radicalization is a big problem in my country. Crack your post-it notes to the place where you think is right. So Jake apparently lives in a very radical country. Interesting. Who's here? Cool, next statement. Polarization is a very big problem in my country. And again, break it to the right place. Okay, so polarization is maybe a bigger issue. Now a bit more personal questions. I live on social media. So we're not very social media minded group of people. You can call me an influencer. No influencers in this room. Ah, oh, that's too bad. 
I have experience with campaigning. Okay. Nice diverse answer. I know my target audience pretty well. Good, that's very positive, nice. And the final question, I want to change the game. Cool, thank you very much. For my final question, I would like to ask you to put your post-it note on the place where you live so we can see um, where the people live who are joining this session. So I'm based in the Netherlands and I'm going to put my post-it note over here. There's a more detailed map of Europe on the right, if you'd like to use that. Great, a diverse mix of people. Well, thank you very much. Um, of course, this exercise wasn't without a reason. Um, at a later stage in this session, uh, we will um, split up in breakout rooms and we will be using the same tool um, to work together um, our audience. For now, we can go back to the session. Yes, so how to zero in on an audience? Um, a target audience is arguably the most important part of the campaign. And defining your audience can be pretty difficult. Um, when you ask campaigners and you ask them, who are you talking to and who is your audience? Um, they often say everyone or society, or they spin out a very broad audience statement. Um, but knowing who exactly your target audience is, is essential. Uh, especially with the rise of social media, it's possible to reach hyper-targeted audiences and very specific audiences. Broad audience statements often include age, gender, ethnicity, income maybe, uh, but also location, what kind of culture, what kind of city they come from, um, religion maybe, um, but still these are quite broad. So we don't know who these people exactly are. It's just a vague, broad persona. But still, your target audience will impact everything you create in a campaign, um, depending on your channel, your message, your layout. Um, everything you do has to make sense to your target audience. It makes no sense to uh, create a campaign where you want to uh, talk to young people and run that campaign on Twitter, because most of the young people are on Instagram or even TikTok. Um, on the other hand, if you want to reach um, an older demographic uh, in a specific area, maybe a social media campaign is not the best way to do it. So your target audience is fundamental for your campaign and it will impact everything you do. And in this session, we will use a methodology where you can um, reach a more hyper-segmented target audience. Um, it's a methodology that's developed in marketing, but it can also be used for campaigns to change behavior. Um, it's called empathy mapping. So instead of looking at the age, the gender, the demographics, et cetera, et cetera, of a target audience, we're going to look at um, influencers, but also agreed realities and um, emotional appeals. And this might sound a little bit tricky and a bit difficult, but actually it's simple mathematics. It's pretty much done by filling in this map. This is the empathy map. And I will go through this map um, first, and then afterwards we can practice with it in breakout sessions. The map always starts in the middle with a target question. And the target question is formulated with a why question based on behavior. Then you add freely chosen behavior plus a community. And that sounds a bit 
scary maybe, but it's a simple mathematics again. It's just adding the right ingredients to this question. So an example could be why. So it starts with a why question. Are young men from Molenbeek, that's a, that's a neighborhood in Brussels. So that's really, um, that's, that's a community, young men in that specific neighborhood. And why are they joining ISIS? So that's a freely chosen behavior. Why? The start of every question in the map. Freely chosen behavior, these kids joining ISIS, and the community is defined by young men from Molenbeek. And this community doesn't have to be something uh, local or regional. It can also be um, people who meet online. It can be um, um, all people who like to play chess. That's also a community in this sense. To practice the why question and the target question, I would like to ask you to um, go to the chat of this session. So don't click on the event, but click on the session. Then the chat session is the right side of your screen. I'm going to form a couple of questions. And you can tell me if the ingredients are all there. So is there a why? Is there a freely chosen behavior? And is there a community in this question? The first one. Why do young men from Paris support Paris Saint-Germain? So that's the football club in Paris. And you can answer by with simply a yes or a no in the chat. So according to Mark, it's a good target question. Does it have a why? Yes. Does it have freely chosen behavior? Yes, because I can choose to support the football club or not. Um, and it's a pretty specific community. It's young men from Paris. So let's try another one. Why do Dutch teenagers drive the speed limit? Yes or no? We've got a yes from Nikos. I think personally, I think this one is on the edge. So is, is driving the speed limit a freely chosen behavior? In a way, also Dutch teenagers, also pretty broad. So for the net, <laughs> Aaron says, depends on the country. Well, it, it, I would argue in the Netherlands, it's not freely chosen behavior per se, because you'll get fined if you don't do it. And if you're a repeated offender, you'll, they'll put you in prison. So it's, it's, it's on the edge, whether it's freely chosen or not. Um, let's try another one. Why do some women share fake news articles? No, good, exactly. Some women is not a specific community. Um, and this question is important. The target question is important if you want to reach the right audience. Try to be as specific as possible. So what's exactly the freely chosen behavior? And what's the community that's acting on that behavior? Try to make it as narrow as possible. Let's look at an example. Why do some young men start smoking cigarettes? I think personally, some young men is wrong. So you can make it narrower. Why do young men um, in this school start smoking cigarettes? But as a target question, we can use it. So you put the target question in the middle of the map. Why do some young men start smoking cigarettes? The next part of the puzzle is influencers. And we're not looking at influencers in the classical sense, like the Instagram influencers. We're looking at people who have an influence on this behavior. So who influences these young men to start smoking cigarettes? When we look at radicalization or polarization, it's quite often that we see that these influences come from social media. 
And the cool thing about social media is that you can look into, into those communities and see what, what they're actually talking about, uh, what stories they share, um, how they move people to different behavior, how they're influencing each other. So if you start a campaign and you really want to dive into the, the influences on your target audience, I would suggest to go to social media and just follow the pages they are following. Um, look for specific Facebook groups. Look for uh, Reddit um, threads. Look for 4chan uh, conversations. And try to see how they're talking to each other and how they're influencing each other. But you can also do it by just taking uh, a step into the map and using empathy and really trying to, to uh, identify with your target audience. So if we look into the smoking boys, and here it's already a bit narrow. So it's why do 12 to 15 year old boys start smoking? We can come up with a couple of influencers on this behavior. So probably they're being influenced by older boys because they look up to them. Um, they're definitely being influenced by their peers. Um, they're also definitely influenced by their parents. Um, and maybe boys who don't smoke have an influence on them. Uh, maybe even cigarette companies or health professionals have an influence on them. Um, and again, you can put in a bit more broad influences like media. But um, if, you, if you use this map, it's good to be as specific as possible. You can also include um, very specific influencers in a more Instagram sense, um, if you know these accounts. So you can really take a look at them and, and reflect on it, why and how they influence the behavior. Um, but for this map, it, it, it looks pretty good, right? So probably all these different squares have an influence on, on this boy's behavior. The next step is a bit more difficult. So it's about agreed realities. And it's about what kind of beliefs your community, your target community has about the influencer. So it's not about your view or how you analyze it. It's about how they um, see the situation. And to make it a bit more concrete, we can use the same question. Um, and here you really need empathy. So here you really need to um, put on the shoes of this 12 to 15 year old boy and think from their perspective. So if a 12 to 15 year old boy starts smoking and he sees an older boy smoking, he probably thinks that when he also starts smoking, that he will be liked by them and that he feels he can be one of them. He also thinks that girl probably thinks that girls will think it's sexy and that he looks like a bad boy. Um, in relation to his parents, he probably thinks that he can be a bit of a, a rebel and that he's his own person and he can make his own decisions. Um, when he looks at peers who already smoke, he wants to be one of them. So he can be one of them by starting to smoke. Um, it will probably feel a lot cooler than boys who don't smoke. And from the more abstract influences like media and cigarette companies, um, he, he can also have pretty strong agreed realities. So when you watch a lot of TV and you see people smoking, you can believe that smoking is cool and badass. Um, in relation to health professionals who tell him that it's unhealthy to smoke, he can probably think that he's young, he won't get sick in the foreseeable future, and he can quit anytime he wants. And when you start with mapping out these influences and the great realities, you get a pretty strong view of why a person can start smoking. Um, for me, this all makes sense. And maybe when, well, I was not 15 years old when I started smoking, but maybe I had these same influences in my life when I started smoking. The final step is arguably the most important. It's about the emotional payoff they have by feeling the way they do. So it's the emotional payoff they get for engaging in this type of behavior. We often have emotional payoffs, whether we like it or not. 
So if you buy something like a new computer, it makes you feel something. And that's because of marketing angles. It's about agregalities, but it's also about influences. Um, smoking, the act itself, won't give them this emotional payoff per se, but engaging in this lifestyle, in this behavior, they do get a certain emotional payoff. So for smoking kids, probably they will feel rebellious when they start smoking in relation to their parents. They feel accepted because he, they can be one of their peers. They will feel accepted by the older boys because they think they are one of them. They maybe feel desired by the girls because they look like bad boys and they look sexy. And it doesn't have to be true, of course. Maybe girls don't like smoking, but it makes sense from the perspective of this young, perspective of this young boy who starts smoking. Um, also, they feel in control in relation to the cigarette companies because they can quit anytime. Um, they don't care. They might feel superior to the health professionals. They maybe get an emotional payoff in the sense that they're feeling admired because of the media, because smoking is cool and badass. Um, these emotions are very important for understanding why your target audience behaves in a sp specific way. Smoking may seem like, a, like, like something that's idiotic and stupid, but if you map it out by using the, the steps I've showed you, well, it, it starts to make sense, right? I can now see why young boys who are maybe easily influenced may start smoking. And it's very important to understand these elements before you start campaigning, because all of these elements you can use um, in your communications, but also in reaching your target audience. By understanding your target audience, um, you also know how you can move them from this behavior. So I'm going to ask Aaron to create a couple of breakout rooms. And um, in these breakout rooms, I will share a link to Mural again, where you can practice with the map. Um, you can work together on these maps um, and you can use post-it notes to move it around, play with it. Um, and to make it a bit easier for you, I've also prepared um, a wheel with emotions so you can look for the emotional payoffs. It can be quite tricky to find the right emotional payoff. Um, so yeah, let's let's take a look at um, the map. Does one, someone want to explain um, what, what you've done? Um, how did it go? Did it help you actually trying to understand your target audience a bit better? Uh, well, we saw it as an exercise. We didn't finish it completely. Uh, talk a little bit about the uh, real look up uh, proposed uh, question that we should discuss. Uh, and then we tried to put some influence groups. Uh, we did have some methodology dilemma that I think maybe we can uh, talk about. It's a problem between being really specific and being general. So if you if you are putting a friend, you have a friends that do good influence and bad influence on voting. Because our, our question was why young people don't vote. And then mm -hmm. you, you have a conflict, conflicting sides. You have to uh, basically uh, uh, you you have two streams. So just putting it in one general category as friends, uh, and then. Again, with the uh, with the emotions, <laughs> is a payoff uh, if you feel uh, anger. I mean, you obviously don't want to engage in something if it's causing you bad emotions. So, what is the payoff method? Of how how you how you would define it? So we are more on the uh, to understand it better because it, with this people. We came through brainstorming that people don't vote because they are either disappointed in a, a previous uh, a political parties or context in general, or the 
or that they uh, don't want to be disappointed again. <laughs> uh, basically, um, and that's where we stop. So I will let my colleagues, if they want to add something on how we done it. And that's it for me. But it was fun. <laughs> Great, thank you. And I will, I will answer your questions later. Um, Maybe a small moment of reflection from your colleagues. Uh, uh, Mina summed up uh, really, really good what, what we did. Um, as you can see, uh, the question there, uh, we tried to make it as specific as possible. We also found the statistic in the media uh, regarding the real situation. And we, uh, in, we had a really good intuition <laughs> regarding the age. Uh, so, I guess one of my questions would be, how do we analyze emotions in terms of payoff? Because as Emina said, uh, bad emotions are not really a, a, re a rewarding uh, payoff, rather than is, they, is just, they just happen or they just exist. So how, do, how we should look at emotions when uh, setting a target from a good perspective in terms of pay, pay, in, to look at uh, the emotion payoff as a reward or uh, emotion payoff, emotional payoff in any term or? So yeah, maybe, maybe just to start there, um, the, the emotional payoff can be both positive or negative. So if people are feeling disappointed, that's a pretty strong emotion, of course. I can feel disappointed in, uh, in politics and that's my, probably my main reason not to vote. Um, and by mapping out that emotion, you understand um, why they're actually not engaging in this behavior, right? So it, it can definitely be a negative emotion, um, mm -hmm. especially since the target question is framed about not doing a thing. So it's not about joining a group or doing something. It's actually about not engaging in, in, in an activity. Um, that's, that's often a strong emotion. Um, so, so being disappointed, um, being angry, uh, being maybe a bit bitter, that's, that's, that's probably related to this issue. So yeah, that works. Um, and this is just the first step you take before you start a campaign, of course. So by understanding that people are disappointed, you can think about campaigns to change that perception of reality, mm -hmm. to change that vision. Um, talking about media campaigns and social media campaigns specifically, um, it's, it's easy to create stories and narratives to break that vision, to, to break that agreed reality. Um, so yeah, um, it can definitely be disappointed. Um, and for the question about friends who maybe give them a positive or either negative emotional payoff, um, I would suggest just to map both out. So just create two slices of this big pizza, mm -hmm. um, one with the positive, one with the negative. Um, it's all about experimenting and seeing what works and what not, what makes sense and what not. Um, of course, you map this out in, in, in just not, not even 30 minutes. Um, if you start a campaign, uh, you probably have to take a bit more time to do this properly. Um, we are also using this um, methodology in relation to uh, research. So we use this as a first map of, 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 of target audience. Then we do research, then we, um, we join Facebook groups, we join um, um, Twitter feeds, we, 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 we listen to our audience and see if our assumptions are correct or not. Um, so also you can treat this as a living document. You can move it around, you can change things. Um, but in the end, it's, it's just to help you to identify better with your target audience. Mm -hmm. and, and just to build upon what Jordi is saying. So uh, again, Jordi conducted the trainings for our project, for the Game Changer project. And, and uh, you're, gonna get, you're gonna be wrong with your, with your assumptions. You're going to be wrong with your target audience. There's nothing wrong with that, especially uh, we're working with people, so there's a tremendous amount of uh, of things that can change. So when we're working with the young people, I think one of the assumptions that we had when we started our project was we're going to address racism. We're going to uh, address like uh, mainly racism and immigration. But the young people that we worked with, they decided to focus on environmental issues and they decided to focus on uh, LGBTQIA rights. 
So those were really the main things. And when we uh, initially created this project within our project proposal, we even have that we're going to address uh, we're going to address racism and an influx in immigration. But the young people that we worked with, they determined something different, and then their audience, their target audience further either reinforced or discouraged what they were suggesting. So they had to reassess and change. So that's going to happen. But I think when Jordi is mentioning this, this uh, addressing those, uh, or, or sorry, testing, that's really where I think uh, that extra level of importance comes in. Sorry, Jordi. For yeah, no, 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 no. Thank you for the addition. And, and also uh, just talk to your target audience. See if your assumptions are correct. Have nice conversations with them. Maybe show them even the map. Um, yeah. it's it's starting point on pain uh, and I think um, our sample um, was a great <laughs> we crafted young people to something that sends or had um, look at it entirely different um, so yeah thanks for that um, are there any other questions from this group oh. um, we we discussed a, a topic uh, of why do you men or boys aged between 13 and 16 drink alcohol? So it's quite similar to one uh, that you proposed earlier, Jordi. And um, I think it was quite interesting as well. Obviously, Nico is from Greece and I'm currently based in the UK. So when we were discussing these uh, different um, activities, for example, uh, uh, emotional payoffs, it was really interesting to see the different cultural dynamics in our two countries uh, and how they interlink. Obviously, it's when, when we mentioned being very specific to the uh, specific audience as well, like we mentioned, why do you men age between 13 and 16? But even that could be perceived as quite broad if we're seeing, if we're differentiating, differentiating between the population of younger men and the Greek population of younger men. So that's one reflection I have just from uh, analyzing the whole of the, uh, all the aspects now. And um, apart from that cultural dynamic as well, we realized the aspect of why, do, why young people drink alcohol was heavily dependent on the social contact as well. Uh, how the need to feel accepted and in, uh, integrated in certain uh, groups. We put, for example, the sports and culture community, especially for young men, they want this is seen as something that's masculine and to be engaged with, you have to drink alcohol because you can't fully participate in it. And um, we realise as well, some of the realities linked to the emotional payoffs, uh, as I mentioned before, a lot of young men, we realise when they're trying to, uh, why they drink alcohol, uh, it's all part of how they need to feel accepted in society in the different cultural settings. Um, and I just, it was really good exercise. And like I said, it was uh, from my, um, uh, looking back on it now, definitely the the cultural dynamics was one of the biggest elements I didn't foresee initially. But like I said, trying to figure out between equals these different elements and different reasons why um, the young men would engage in it is we, we realized there were different reasons in both our uh, communities. Nice, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, so just, I, I, th I think that's a very interesting point. Um, um, cultural differences are very important when you um, do an exercise like this. Um, and that's why it's also so very important to get your, um, I'm hearing a terrible echo. Is it just me? You're muted, Aaron. Sorry, uh, Jake, I think it's coming from you because I see when I speak, it's the, uh, yes. If you can mute your, perfect. Thank you. So um, cultural differences are very important. Um, and that's why it's key to have your target question right. Um, so I think this is a nice example because it's why do young men age between 13 and 16? That's quite a broad group. Are we talking about young men um, in the UK, or we're talking about young men in Greece, or we're talking about young men in this specific school. Um, so the more narrow your target question is, um, the, the better your insights will be. Um, of course, this was just an exercise, so I'm not blaming you of anything, but I, th I think that's very important to remember. Um, and on the other hand, um, emotions like acceptance and a sense of belonging, um, these are strong emotions. Um, and these these emotions are everywhere. So on the one hand, um, a broad question. Well, actually, I think I think this is this quite an interesting story. A, a pretty broad question 
led to something that's fundamental also for understanding radicalization and polarization. People act on this sense of belonging. People want to be accepted. Um, and this is why people maybe start drinking, but this is also why people engage in more radical behavior because they, they think from a group and they want to belong to that group. Um, so thank you. I think it was a nice example. Do you have any other questions or insights you want to share? Uh, personally, I don't think so. It was pretty clear. Thank you about that. I, I think, Jordi, a question I would have, uh, I think that's that's relevant, is is you mentioned testing. So I don't know how much time we have, or we have 26 minutes. Um, but but how do you recommend testing, especially, uh, again, I think a lot of us are focused on uh, working with younger people, but when you mention testing, what do you envision that looking like? Is it going in person? Is it uh, checking people's Facebook accounts? Is it, it What does that look like to you? Um, well, well, this depends on your, your time and your resources, of course. Um, for me, I try to test my assumptions by just joining the same um social media platforms and groups and pro follow the same profiles as my target audience would um so maybe anecdotally after trump got elected in 2016 the first thing i did was joining um pro trump groups on facebook um just to understand what they're talking about where they're coming from what kind of stories they share um and the emotions they have um and in, at a later stage, that functioned as a key re, uh, research part of a project I did on disinformation in the US. Um, <laughs> um, so so that, that, that could be a very cheap and easy way to, to check your assumptions and to, to get a better insight into your target audience. Um, if you want to do a bit more extensive work, um, definitely do focus groups. Um, um show them uh, your thinking your target so so involve your target audience um in your in your thinking um and the most important thing i would say is just try to get someone from your target audience to be become part of your campaign either as a consultant or someone just to have conversations with but but try to involve them so you're not just broadcasting your message it, it actually comes from your target audience Awesome, thank you. Cool. Um, so this little activity and little exercise is part of something that's bigger and way more um, um, structural and methodologically sound. Um, um, it's part of the Game Changer uh, training curriculum. Um, we just we just showed you a tiny part of it. So it's one of the 13 squares you can go through before you actually start campaigning. Um, as Aaron mentioned, um, we've implemented these trainings with um, young campaigners already. Um, and everything will be made available to you. So this 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 is all um, open and you can use it for your campaigns, you can use it for your trainings. Um, the next step of this exercise would actually be that you pick one of the slices of a map. So once you've done some mapping of the issue, you understand what, what, what the issue is, you understand what is happening, you understand the reasons and the emotions and the motives um, certain people behave in a certain way. Um, then you, you try to identify the slice of the map that's the most powerful, and you think you can make a uh, difference or an impact. Um, so in this example, you could use probably um, girls. I think that's always a nice one. So these young men, they, they start drinking alcohol because they want to feel desired, and they want to be perceived as attractive and as a bad boy. Um, by girls, that's a slice you can work on. You can break that image. So you can include girls in your campaign to show them a different reality. So these girls will probably don't think that you're attractive or a bad boy. Um, so this was just a teaser to start thinking about campaigns. 
start identifying ways to build campaigns that, that actually change behavior. Um, and this tool, it's, it's pretty generic. So you can use it for, for a variety of issues. Um, again, this has been done by marketing campaigns, but also a lot of countering radicalization uh, activities um, use this methodology as a starting point. Um, maybe before we close off this session, um, I would like to open the floor one final time for any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. You don't have to start your camera. And if there are no final remarks, questions or concerns, I will share my email address in the chat. Um, so the goal of this, this project, the Game Changer project is for people um, to go out there and make a difference. So if you have any questions related to the methodology, um, related to the session, feel free to reach out. Um, uh, the mural links, thank you for sharing, Amina. Um, mural is a great tool. Um, the links I've shared will stay open, so you can just continue working on your uh, maps if you want. Um, but also um, the entire methodology uh, will be made available on the Game Changer website. I believe Aaron shared the link just yet. Yes. Um, so, sorry for interrupting, Jordi. Um, oh, but yeah, we have, we have all of our, our tools over there. Actually, they're being updated as we speak. So if you're clicking and it's not working at this specific moment, uh, our, our IT team uh, developers are working on that now. Um, but if you go there to the website that I had just uh, sent, so Game Changer EU, uh, I realized I typed this wrong. <laughs> I will retype that. So gamechangereu.org slash build dash a dash campaign, but I will resend that. Uh, but anyways, all of the tools over there are free. Um, we're encouraging you all to, to use them. As Jordi had mentioned, uh, what he just used now is, is a part of that, uh, the methodology, the ideology, everything behind it. Um, and another thing that's very relevant as well is for us to get your feedback. So we'll be asking what you all think, and really we want to focus this um, we want to focus on getting this feedback from everybody to understand uh, what worked in this, what didn't, so we can make that change, so so we can make this more localized and, and work better. Thank you, Jordi. 